designed to inspire with your host, Shannon Clark Curo. Today, I will engage you on a topic about acing the interview session, except this time I am going to be addressing the employers, yes, the persons who are responsible for conducting the interview session. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. I want you to stay. Let us learn together and let us together ace that interview. <laughs> must prepare for the interview session. Do remember that the session, the interview session, is a platform for both the employee and the employer to understand what the job is about and to see if either party is interested in either taking up the position or the employer interested in the employee. And such, as such, the employer is also required to prepare for the interview session. No, you can agree that an individual can have the right skills, meaning that they, they, they own the skills. They know exactly how to carry out the task, but their attitude is just wrong. And in this instance, an employer do not want an individual at the organization who just don't, who just don't have the right attitude so in essence the first thing that an employer needs to do is to interview the candidate based on the what i want to call soft skills yes i know it's overplayed and some persons really don't believe in this soft skill notion but what i'm hear me out for a little bit if you have a candidate who is who has the right attitude personality and you know the inter based on the interview interaction you recognize that this person is trainable it is much easier for the organization to employ that individual and train them now yes your organization is not a, new, a university i hear that too but if you have a candidate who of course have the right skills they know how to carry out the task they have years of experience but their attitude just is just wrong then it means that you would not want this candidate in your organization because what is going to happen is the person is just as how the person who might not know the skill can frustrate you and frustrate the process this individual who has the skill, on the skill, but has possessed the wrong attitude, display the wrong attitude and is not ready for the work environment, can frustrate the process as well. So, employees, do know that you have an option, the interview session gives you that option to ascertain whether or not you want that position. Employers tend to talk about years of experience, years of experience. So um, this position is available, but we want the individual to have at least five years, six years, 10 years, 15 years of experience in senior management based on the position. And I think it's time now for us to step away from that because Years of experience does not mean productivity. Years of experience does not mean responsibility. Years of experience does not mean initiative, creativity. Years of experience means years of experience. It could be an individual who have been working in an organization for 15 years in that uh, position, but yet still was not able to 
propel the organization in towards greatness. And so because you read a resume that say, well, then an individual has 15 years of experience, you decide to employ that person over the person who has one year or probably zero. And then you recognize that that is all the individual has. 15 years of experience, nothing else. 15 years of what type of experience though? What type of experience? Because I can have 15 years of experience where I'm just sitting in my position. I am not creating anything. I'm not designing anything. I am not using my initiative. I'm not building the organization, but I have 15 years. No, I come to you with my 15 years, but my nonchalant behavior, you know, uh, my lackadaisical behavior, that will not help your organization. So employers, I would like you to rethink that a little bit, you know, years of experience is important, yes. However, if again, let me, let me go back to what I said earlier. If you have a candidate who is who has the right attitude it's like you are given a blank slate and you have the opportunity to write upon that slate what you need to be read and it is much easier to train a person like that because they come in with open mind right with an open mind and it gives you the opportunity to engage and to train them to develop them based on what you want them to do a degree suggests that the person is trainable, and I say it suggests, right? So a degree suggests that the person is trainable. Do remember that a degree does not mean that the person necessarily knows the job. So if I, if, if, if I have a degree in, say, psychology, right? So I have a, a master's de degree in psychology. It doesn't mean that I'm able to give good guidance, I'm able to coach, I'm able to counsel, and I'm efficient and effective. What it means is that I am able to regurgitate to pass in order to get my degree. Because universities, what they do is you are paying a certain amount of money for a university and so uh, the night before exam, two nights before exam, you stay, you burn the midnight candle and you you stuff everything inside your head you know you just continue to stuff and when you get your exam you just regurgitate it doesn't mean that learning took place it means that i'm good at regurgitating it mean it doesn't mean that i under, i even understood what i placed on the paper yet still i managed to get a, an a and now i am coming to your organization with a master's degree at the highest level and you're smiling because you're saying well then this candidate uh, graduated at the top of her class but guess what this candidate will have to go back to the books because this candidate regurgitated to pass her exam in order to get her degree and no I've, I've forgotten everything right so we need to reconsider how we conduct interviews as employers because i think we are doing great justice it's the word is in the injustice to prospective clients we're expecting them to have the degree we're expecting them to have years of experience and we're expecting them to come with the best attitude no we will have to train and i say it is best for them to come with the lack of experience but the best attitude because they can be trained as opposed to come with the, the years of experience and the worst attitude because you might just have another lackadaisical employee on your hands. So prepare for your interviews um, employers just as all the employee need to prepare for the interview. Another thing that I want to bring to your attention is the types of questions that we ask at an interview session should be aligned with the job position. So in, in, in preparing, while preparing for the interview, I believe that as an interviewer, you should have the JDs and then you should coin your questions based on the JD. So you're going to ask, okay, 
what are the qualities that I'm seeking in this individual? So I need a customer service uh, manager. What are the qualities that I need this customer service manager? Um, what qualities these, this customer service manager should have, right? So you're going to ask the questions. You're going to write the questions to bring out the responses. Many a times some empty questions are being asked as though uh, the, 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 the interviewers, the interviewer's uh, aim is to interrogate, you know, the, the, the candidate. An interview session is a session that should be, you know, comfortable for the person who is being interviewed. Because if the person feels as though he or she is being interrogated, they already failed the interview. And sometimes we have candidates leaving the interview session wondering, what was that? That wasn't an interview at all. So we have to be mindful of this. So you ask the questions based on your job description and based on what qualities, based on the, I do not want to say the ideal because there's no ideal candidate. You will have to do some work, right? But, 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 but the best candidate, the best fit for this position. And so we don't waste time. What I tend to, 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 to believe is that interviewers oftentimes believe that the interview session is just for the interviewers. No, no, it's not. And so we have to treat the session with care. Um, ensure that the, the time that the interview is scheduled for, you are on time. And if you're not going to be on time because, you know, things happen, ensure that you communicate with the interviewee because just as how you might be turned off if you invite a candidate for an interview and the candidate arrives half an hour later it's just the same way the candidate will be turned off and you know let's respect each other time do respect the candidate's time as much as you want the candidate to respect your time so if you recognize that the interview is running a little bit late uh, the right thing to do is to communicate with the interviewee to say well then uh, I, I must apologize but i'm going to be a little bit late please i ask for or ask for your patience in this instance and not just have the person sitting and waiting for a 10 o'clock interview that turns out to be a 12 o'clock interview because if that person arrive for the interview 12 o'clock when the interview should have been 10 you as the interviewer would have turned the person away and say well then you're no longer interested in interviewing the individual finally finally you want to close the interview session with courtesy you know you want to say thank you for attending the interview uh, and allow the interviewee to ask questions yes allow the interviewee to ask questions you see i have been to interviews before well i've been to an interview before and then at the end of the interview i was told okay you are allowed one question i mean i was just asked a plethora of questions and at the end of, end of the interview i was told that i'm allowed one question you see, that told me that the interviewer thought that the interview session was just for the company. The interview session was for me as well, because while they were asking me questions, I was also using the opportunity to determine if I really wanted to work for that organization. And as soon as the interviewer said to me, well, Miss Clark, you are allowed one question, I said, thank you but i have no question because in my head i didn't know which one of the 10 questions i should choose to ask because i believe all my questions were important just as much as their questions were important to determine whether or not i'm the right fit for the organization so as an interviewer you want to allow the interviewee to ask questions give them the opportunity to determine whether or not the job is right for them yes you want to say thank you you want to say farewell with courtesy 
So employers, the next time you're going to an interview session, you do remember that the interviewees are preparing themselves and you should prepare yourselves too because the session is a meeting for the, both the interviewer and the interviewee to use the outcome of the session now to determine the way forward. I hope you enjoyed our talk today. Thank you for watching. This is a design to inspire where we continue to motivate, engage, and inspire. Be inspired.